Hello and welcome back to the online tutorial for Live Binders. This is video three in a series of three. To bring us all up to speed, we have set up the binder, we've created a unit for our binder, and then we've created sub-tabs, documents in which we use in class, enrichment activities, notes, PowerPoint slides, whatever the case may be. And the last thing we created was using the Live Binder It tool to insert a web page into one of our binder tabs. Um, I found another um, enrichment activity that I want to include in this unit of Revolutionary War and I'm going to include it as a sub tab. So once again we click edit menu. I want to insert a t uh, sub tab so I click on tabs and then add sub tab. New sub tab is added here. I go to the site that I want to add in my favorites. I click on live binder it. A new window pops up. Again, double check to ensure you're in the right uh, binder if you have more than one binder. And I want to create a sub tab under the Unit 1 Revolutionary War. Close that out once the countdown is finished. Go back to your binder, save it, and again, depending on the speed, it may take you a couple seconds for this window to pop up, but it just, again, tells you that the binder has been updated. Click OK. It'll reload the page, and you should see the new sub-tab listed. And this time, it's actually named the, uh, the website. Oh, do you see what happened here? I created a new sub tab like I did before, thinking that I would need it. But in this case, this time the live binder tool simply created the sub tab itself. So sometimes that happens. Trial and error. It's the way you, it's the way you learn the best on any new gadget, I guess. In my in my case, that's the way it goes. Um, so we don't need this sub tab, so I want to delete this sub tab. And we still have the mission 13 or mission US 13 colonies. This is the game that the kids can play. For crown or colony and again it's just a little um, interactive game that helps them understand the topic a little bit better. The next thing I want to show you is how to add more tabs. Right now we have unit one depending on how many units you teach in a, in a year um, you, could, you could have any number of units and tabs. So I'm going to create a new tab that brings us up to here. I want to call this Unit 2, writing the Constitution. It's a good thing I'm not the one who's writing it because I can't spell today. And then the process continues from there. I would add a series of sub tabs for this unit based on the documents that I use in class. I have an interesting website that I like, thehistorychannel.com. I don't necessarily want that to be any part of one unit. I just want that attached to my um, binder. So I'm going to once again go to my Live Binder It tool. And for students who really enjoy history, this is a good website. Just gets them uh, looking at all different kinds of stuff, history related. Again, not necessarily tied to one specific uh, unit. In that case, I want to create a new tab. So that will add the History Channel website to a new tab. I'm going to close out of these websites just to keep things cleaned up. And here we are back at the binder. Click Save. There's your prompt saying that your binder has been updated and a new tab has been created, History Channel. And that takes you right to the website and it is fully interactive from this point. Anything that you would do at the History Channel website itself, you can do right here from your live binder. Now I don't want this to interrupt my units. I want this tab maybe at the very beginning. There's two ways to do this. You can use the yellow drop-down arrow 
and say I want it at the front ahead of my unit so I'd say move tab to left or you can go to your edit menu and sometimes this is a cleaner way of doing this and when I say cleaner um, if you're using PDFs which I strongly encourage you to do PDFs sometimes um, overlap the text you can't see all of this information down here if you're using the drop down menu the PDF gets in the way so use the edit menu it opens up this window and click on tabs and reposition tabs you can simply say move to the left and now we've moved our website all the way to the very beginning again click save and we'll close out the edit menu so I have a history website that I think the kids might be interested in I have my first unit created my second unit started without sub tabs now I want to show you an a elaborate um, binder it's my own personal binder that I've been using for several several years now you can see the tabs all the way across the top these are not all units that I teach most of them are the units I teach a lot of them are uh, history websites that I reference throughout the year um, this website just has a lot of information my students can use this is our textbook online again the history channel notice the similarities there popping up sometimes I'll have my students um, do projects and one project that I like to have the kids do is create a website webs.com is a good option for that wix.com is a good option it's a free option weebly.com it seems to be the easiest so there's three options right there the students can use here's a fun activity called flipbook it's a neat uh, neat little online online activity they just do pencil drawings or line drawings and then uh, they, they create a little flipbook it's kind of neat jigsaw is fun you have this thing set up at the beginning of class and you can use it with your smart board and um, you can create your own jigsaws you take a picture say like my picture of the signing of the declaration I can upload that to Jigsaw Planet click on create and it'll divide up the picture into a series of puzzle pictures and then the students can work maybe before class starts or at the end of class on piecing the puzzle together easy bib students have to uh, cite using a bibliography uh, so this is a good op option or a good site good tool for them to use in helping in citation and then my syllabus for my classes that I teach are here and then we get into the units now if you look the first unit we teach at the freshman level is called the reconstruction era and these are all of the documents that we'd use in that unit and we go on to the west and Gilded Age I'm going to jump ahead to imperialism just to give you an idea of what an, el an elaborate setup and how much depending on the, the level of the depth that you get into your class or into a unit. You can see we got several sub tabs there. Several documents are used in imperialism. Same thing for uh, progressivism. World War I, there's a ton of information that we go over in World War I. So that you're, you're not limited to any number of sub tabs that you can create or tabs themselves. This tab continues to go on as I can uh, press on the right arrow button. So that's that. That is the live binder um, tutorial number three, the, the end there. If you have any questions, you can email me. My email is gregwalker at nixaschools.net. Thanks for listening. Good luck. Hope you enjoy.